and welcome to another exciting video. Till now we have covered how to create a user, verify them, create their sessions, delete that session. But if you notice over here, we are not logged in and we are able to see these events. Now if I click on any of these events, I'm able to go ahead and delete them as well. So what we'll be learning now is how we can provide these granular permissions so that the logged in user can play with these things and not some unauthorized user coming in and deleting these events. So to do that, we'll be heading over to our app, right? And here we have to implement this at database level and storage level. So let's go with the storage first. Here under images, go to settings. And then if you notice, we have this role any. And currently anyone can go ahead and create and delete. So what we need to do is over here, go ahead and select users. And as you can see, we have a set of users coming in. We can select these users or if I go ahead and click all users. So anyone who is locked in basically will be able to delete or add events. And that's what we want at the moment. So we'll remove the create and delete feature and we'll provide this over here. Now, we can go ahead and provide this read access to users as well. But even if I don't do that, the any role will take care of that. But it's a good practice to have this kind of permission set up so that if you remove a role later down the line, the other role will not be impacted by that change. So now let's go ahead and click on update over here. So we have modified our storage. Now let's go to the database and here we'll be going inside the database. Then we'll go inside the collections and here under settings, we'll scroll down a bit. And here also we'll be going ahead, selecting users, providing the same permission and removing it from the any role. So we have done that as well. Now, if I go ahead and reload this page, you can see that I'm not logged in at the moment. Let's try deleting this event. You'll notice that it says the current user is not authorized to perform the requested action. Now, one more thing I would like to highlight over here, and that is if I just go to the root URL and here, let's say I know how to create a new event. So I know the URL of it. So if I go over here, and select events new, you can see that I'm able to access this URL, but now I'm not logged in. And if I try creating an event over here, and let's say we have filled in all these details, I will be clicking on the submit button over here. And you'll notice that it says the current user is not authorized to perform the requested action. So this is how we have protected our pages where some user need to log in first and then take the action. We can further enhance it by creating teams or admins as well, so that if you want to move this whole event creation process as an admin thing, you can do that as, as well by going over here and let's go to users. So here under auth, you can create user. And when you're creating user, let's say we have already one over here and there you can see you can create teams and you can add users to a given team. You have security and templates. So this and all we will be exploring a bit more in the next lecture where we'll see how we can create an admin user, how we can add that admin user to a team. So that and all will be coming up in the next one.